Hey everybody, Nick here. I am here to talk to you more about queuing and our methodology that I use in our teacher trainings. So I use a methodology called SAD, S-A-D, queuing, and that stands for shape, alignment or action, and depth. And this is the order of operations for any type of class, whether it's a Hatha class, whether it's a Vinyasa class, or even if it's a restorative class. It gives you the order of operations and, uh, and priority, but also in the order of operations that makes most sense when you are queuing yoga classes. <laughs> so let's talk about the shape first. So the shape is the most important part of any yoga class because uh, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is get people into different shapes, right? Different postures, different poses, and we want them to be somewhat structurally similar. And so what you first do is cue the shape. Now, what I see sometimes as a mistake, people will begin to cue shape, but then they don't cue the full shape and they'll start cueing alignment and depth. And that's what I'll go into uh, when we talk a little bit more about alignment and depth. But the shape is something like inhale, reach your right leg up, exhale, place your right foot in between your hands, inhale, reach your arms up, Ashta Chandrasana or Crescent Lunge. So in one and a half breaths, I've gotten them into a shape. That's our priority. We have to get everyone into crescent lunge before you start to say things like now corset your abdomen in or you know stack ankle over or under knee. Those types of things uh, can come later once you have them in the shape. And this is the same thing if even if you're queuing a restorative class, for example, if you're bringing a bolster under their knees or and you want their knees out and a strap around their belly and you want them reclined back you have to cue them into that before you start to cue any type of depth. And sort of is great uh, for options for depth. And uh, we'll get to that. So really prioritizing your actions. We talked a little bit about how to cue, you know, inhale your right foot forward, direct command form in our last video. So you're welcome to check down below, put the link and down below to that video. But for this uh, first, first um, of the SAD, Cueing. shape is the most important. Even if you didn't cue alignment and action in depth for the whole class, but you only cued shape cueing, you still would have eventually, essentially given the people a, a, yoga, a yoga class <laughs> um, in the way that we expect it uh, in the West and in a yoga asana class. And so they'll at least have gotten into some shapes. So this is your major priority. Now the next part is gives you a little bit goes a little bit deeper and gives you the, uh, the space for alignment or action. So this could be something like an Ashta Chandrasana and Crescent Lunge. Could be something like turn your left outer hip forward and squeeze pubic bone up towards navel. Now this will help align the pelvis. It'll help create that action of core strength. And, and so these types of cueing, uh, this type of cueing and, and is not necessarily priority, but certainly beneficial, and I highly recommend queuing this way. Uh, you can say something like, you know, bring your knee over your ankle, or scrunch your mat up under your front foot, and, noti and notice the sensation in your right inner thigh, and that's depth, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but it sets yourself up also if you want to further cue depth. Uh, but alignment and action comes after you actually get them into the shape. So if you take a different shape like warrior two, for example, so you're moving from crescent lunge to a warrior two, you know, first you got to get them into warrior two. So inhale, ground down your back foot, reach your arms out, Virabhadrasana B, warrior two, right? So now you've gotten them there. Now you can cue alignment. And squeeze your right outer hip more to bring your right knee towards the pinky toe side edge of your foot. Right? This is more of the alignment and action oriented types of verbiage. And then finally have depth cueing. And this is the D in the SAD. And depth can be further stabilizing instructions. It can be uh, further safety instructions. Um, or it can also be inquiry-based language. And, and you know, in some classes like yin or restorative, you have a lot of space for depth cueing. Um, often, if you're cueing a dynamic vinyasa class, you won't have a lot of space uh, unless you structure your cueing methodology this way. And I, I often like to use inquiry. Uh, I think it's, it's really um, beneficial to have students kind of think about their bodies and get in touch with their bodies in that way. So for example, in Warrior Two, once you've cued, inhale, ground down the back foot, reach your arms out, Virabhadrasana B, 
you can say, cue a little bit more alignment, activate your outer right hip, pull your right knee towards the pinky toe side edge of your uh, foot, and then you can say, notice the sensation in your right inner thigh. Or you can say, squeeze your heels towards one another, notice the sensation in your back leg. Uh, noticing sensation, I think, is something that is really powerful to people, but also it's not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily cued a lot uh, in yoga classes. Um, often in Western yoga asana classes, they tend to be a very fitness oriented. Um, so often we're just trying to cue the the action and shape, uh, and often leave out some of the most amazing parts, which is, which is really discovering your body and discovering your mind's reaction to your body. And so depth can be really, really powerful. Now, if you're a beginning yoga teacher and you're just learning how to sequence and how to structure a class, sequencing is our next video. Um, if you're learning how to sequence and structure a class and you really just need to get them through an hour, 75 minutes, 90 minute asana class, your focus is doing that. Your focus isn't, isn't to have um, this mind-blowing experience because really you really have to be on autopilot in other areas. My, uh, I like that my um, partner in crime, Kate, who teaches with me, she, she referred to it uh, in our last teacher training weekend like that because you have to be very comfortable with the shape and alignment in order to really get deep into depth cueing. So if you're a beginner yoga teacher, I really highly recommend focusing on shape, alignment, and action. Uh, all the way through your class consistently to give the students a consistent experience. But maybe try on depth for one or two poses and then see how that fits in your personal style, but also see how it fits you know, with your students. And then you can go really deep into that. Uh, sometimes you can have a whole class that's just really juicy and depth uh, cued oriented. And then other times you really do uh, might have a specific you know, peak sequence or pose that you're trying to get to, and you really do need to focus on action. And you, maybe you're trying to lengthen the hip flexors or strengthen the outer hips, and you know, you take your priorities. Um, you don't have to cue shape, alignment, depth for every single pose because your students will get tired of hearing you speak. <laughs> but do allow some space for silence, allow some space for investigation, but do prioritize shape. So let's take another pose and go all the way through. So let's say we're moving from downward facing dog into crescent lunge into warrior two. And something that you could do from here, so you're in down dog, inhale, lift your right leg up. Exhale, place your right foot in between your hands. Inhale, raise your arms to the sky. Ashta Chandrasana, crescent lunge. Now stack right knee on top of right ankle as you pull your left outer hip forward. Notice the sensation and your front left thigh. Take a breath in. Exhale, ground down your left foot, open your arms up, Virabhadrasana B. Make your right outer hip stronger, pull your right knee towards the right side of your mat. Notice the sensation in your right inner thigh. Squeeze your heels together. Notice if you can bring equal weight into both front and back leg. Take a breath in. Exhale, pinwheel your hands down, step to plank. Take an inhale and plank. Da 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 da. And you can keep going. And so that's just kind of an, an example of cueing shape first. And, and shape will sometimes move faster if you're moving in a breath round and you're just moving them into crescent lunge. You'd obviously, you, you don't have a half a breath to start to give them depth cueing. Like, notice the sensation in your thigh. Now go move on, move on. You don't want to overwhelm them. Um, but shape, alignment or action, and depth. Shape, alignment, and action, and depth. Again, prioritize shape. Get them in the shape before you start throwing all this stuff at them. If you're twisting and you start cueing, of course, that your abdomen in, and they're not even twisting it, and you're like, lift your chest up and find more length, and da 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 and then people are like, what pose is this? You know, are we just standing here? And so really get them in the pose first, and then this will help you be able to investigate um, a little bit more. Uh, with your cueing. And what I r highly encourage you to do is what I en encourage you to do in the last video is to really try to uh, hone in on your ability to uh, cue 
And one of the ways you can do that is record yourself. So record yourself at cueing in this way, shape, alignment, depth. Um, the biggest thing that you can do for this type of cueing methodology is script. So write a script, write a whole vinyasa class, hatha class, whatever it is you teach, yin, restorative, script it all and pick out what shape cueing you want, pick out what alignment or action cueing you want and pick out what depth cueing you want and then try it on and repeat it to yourself teach it to yourself, record it to yourself. And it sounds like a lot of work, trust me, I know. <laughs> Especially if you're teaching you know, more than one style and several different classes a week. You don't have to do it for every single class, but it is a really, really good exercise. It's something that we make all of our yoga teacher trainees go through themselves. So they have that, that tool in their toolbox to further their teaching. So I really encourage you all to try it on shape, alignment, depth, uh, if you have any more questions, uh, stay tuned. There's a lot more uh, content that I have that I'm creating specifically for teachers. And if there's something that you specifically want to see, if there's certain things that you would like me to speak on for yoga teachers, comment down below and I would be happy to try to oblige. Uh, I'm curious what you all are struggling with or what you all have bumped up against or if there's something that you're really interested to see more of. Um, I'm excited to offer some content on, here on YouTube for uh, yoga teachers specifically, because I think it's a, it's a need uh, for just a little bit more uh, availability of education for us, um, you know, for us that look at yoga teacher, teaching yoga as an art. Uh, so thanks for everyone for joining me as always, and have an awesome day. Namaste.